title, I've got a few slides uh, because there are a few numbers I want to discuss. Uh, as you can see from the title, I consider infrastructure investment for the Mediterranean what I call a growth lifting strategy. It is something that we need to do and I'm going to explain why that is. Let's start off the Mediterranean region represents something like 10% of global GDP, 7% of the population. But what I want you to look at is the big gaps between the EU Mediterranean countries and the non-EU. Per capita GDP in the non-EU is about $7,000 per capita. For the EU Mediterranean is 36, so it's about one-fifth in the non-EU Mediterranean. The other important fact is what we call the age dependency ratio how many dependents are per working population. And this, of course, is about the aging of Europe. And you'll see that for the, non, for the EU Mediterranean, it's four times as high. The dependency ratio is four times as high as it is in the non-EU. Representing non-EU Mediterranean is fast growing and the young population. When you have fast growing populations, of course, you need to supply them with infrastructure. What this graph shows you, and I want you to look at the oil importers, because many of the Mediterranean uh, countries, of course, are oil importers, countries like Egypt. There's a big gap between their requirements for infrastructure, for roads, housing, electricity, water, telecom, and everything else, and what is actually being financed. And that gap is $60 billion, $60 billion moving forward to 2020. That's for the Mediterranean and the North Africa region, so Middle East, North Africa. If we focus on the Mediterranean itself, what we're talking about is the current gap in terms of financing infrastructure in this part of the world, in the Mediterranean, of 23 billion euro per annum, a gap, which is not being financed. So neither of the countries have the possibilities, nor are they receiving financing from the rest of the world, a big gap. And so that infrastructure shortage is hurting growth opportunities, as we shall see. This graph shows the connection between investing in infrastructure and global competitiveness. This comes from the World Economic Forum. And as you can see, um, the higher your infrastructure spending on the vertical axis, the more competitive you are. So a country like Malta, to take that example, uh, scores highly in terms of infrastructure and global competitiveness. My own home country has been under investing in infrastructure, so it's at the lower end. So this strong connection between infrastructure investment and global competitiveness is really what we should be caring about. And this gap is not being filled through participation of the private sector. So if you look at PPPs on a global level, uh, the main region in terms of both the number of contracts, PPP projects, as well as the investments, the value or the volume, is the lowest in the world in terms of PPP. And we need to ask ourselves why that is and what we should be doing about it. And if we look at where there is public-private partnerships in the Mediterranean <coughs> and North Africa, <coughs> and Middle East North Africa, you'll see that the bulk of it is in telecoms and electricity. And the reason why that is, is that those two sectors were liberalized. They were opened up to private sector participation. So the important lesson here is that policy reform matters. When you liberalize a sector, you attract private sector <coughs> investment. Excuse me. <coughs> so why is it that I call this, why, why is investment in, in infrastructure so important? Why do I call it a growth lifting strategy? The first, of course, is that demographics and rapid urbanization uh, drives infrastructure requirements. You build cities. But second, we know from the numbers that each $10 billion that you spend in infrastructure creates one million jobs. And of course, job creation is the number one priority for the countries of the region, given their young populations. But second, when you invest in infrastructure, it also it allows you to diversify economic activity and diversify your trade and it improves, as we saw, your competitiveness. And fundamentally, when you invest in infrastructure, you drive regional integration, international integration, and domestic integration. So when you create the roads and the airports and the ports, 
and you provide electricity and water and telecoms, what that means is that the whole country benefits. And what you need to do, and this is very important when you're choosing infrastructure projects, is look at three criteria always. Does it mean that your infrastructure means you're internationally connected? Does it lead to regional integration? And third, does it mean that you crowd in private sector investment? And that is probably the most critical bit. When you design the infrastructure, make sure it crowds in private sector investment. The second part of why it is so important is that because of the underinvestment, the returns, the economic and social returns to investing in infrastructure are very high. And this, of course, given the underinvestment, this is the time at which we should be using infrastructure investment to face climate change and decarbonization for the Mediterranean countries, in particular those from the South Mediterranean. But there are two other important aspects I need to bring up. When we think of a lot of the infrastructure projects currently ongoing, they are mainly linking the non-EU Mediterranean countries to Europe. What we need to think of is the big structural change now that is driving the global economy increasingly into Asia. So much of the trade and growth is Asia. And what we need to think of is to design infrastructure investment so that we link into new global chains coming out of Asia and also to Africa. And the last bit, and unfortunately it was not mentioned at any time during the sessions this morning, is reconstruction. Many of the countries around the Mediterranean have been destroyed by war. So if you think of the amount of reconstruction expenditure, and much of it is infrastructure that has to be done, just between Syria and Libya, you're talking about over half a trillion dollars. And if you add up Syria, Palestine, and others, you're talking something close to $700 billion. That is a massive amount of reconstruction spending. So my message here is, when you talk about infrastructure spending, talk also about reconstruction, because this is a big opportunity for business, a big opportunity for all of us to get around and agree that we need to move ahead in that direction. So forget the politics, focus on the economics. But why is all this not happening? Why is it, despite the attractiveness, that we don't get this investment? Of course, politics, governance and conflicts, and by politics I mean corruption and everything else that goes with it, prevents these investments. But there's also the lack of transparency. You don't have a legal and regulatory framework. <clears throat> there are subsidies, for example, to fuel, which prevent investment in the energy industry. And above all, you don't have a framework for private sector investment and involvement. That needs to be put in place. Now, what is happening today at the level of the region? And I know my, my co-panelists will want to dig into some of the projects. Fundamentally, if you look at what currently are the priorities, and I would mention that these are European priorities in many cases. Uh, Europe tends to look at <clears throat> the region in terms of its requirements, in terms of, in terms of energy. Um, but Desert Tech could be a transformational project because if you think of the solar power and the solar energy potential of, of the Mediterranean region and the desert regions of the Mediterranean, they could supply Europe as well as the Mediterranean with 100% renewable energy by 2050. One comment, though, I would make on this. <clears throat> At the moment, you don't have a market for energy. You need to put that in place. And second, you need to make sure that when you're discussing energy, you also discuss water. Water and energy have to go together. So that means desalination. And the future is going to have to be to desalination. Final comment on this one is the underinvestment in digital. If you want the countries of the non-EU Mediterranean, the southern Mediterranean, to really grow and develop and to be part of the global economy, a massive investment needs to be made to make them digital economies. So telecoms and networking is going to be critical to move forward. And it's also important, as we well know, for payments and for financial inclusion. Oh. Okay. 
If you, can't, if you don't wake up after your lunch, after this picture, I'm not sure what will wake you up. Um, this is a picture, just a couple of pictures of four countries that got destroyed by war. Um, Syria, uh, Gaza, Libya, and, and Cyprus. Those are some of the examples. This shows you the, the amount of destruction that actually took place. And if you recall our discussion this morning, there are really no military solutions. The only solutions that you can move forward to are political solutions and economic solutions. So what do we need to do to move forward? There are, of course, many things. First, I think, is we need to have a framework, a legal and regulatory framework for public-private partnerships, which we don't have in many of the countries. And that, of course, also means privatization in my book. Why privatization? Because, to my mind, the main engine of economic growth moving forward, the main engine to create jobs, is the private sector. So we need to make sure that all the incentives are given to the private sector to invest. Second, you need to grow your local financial markets, have projects financed through bonds and other. Third, you may need to make sure that your infrastructure is not only linked to Europe, but also to the GCC countries, because they're increasingly connected to Asia. And finally, um, we need something that gives vision namely a Middle East Bank for reconstruction and development. Otherwise, none of this is really going to happen. And this is the story. This is the new Silk Road. We need to be connected to that. So my final slide. Um, infrastructure investment in the Mediterranean has really the potential to change the economic geography. It is what I call a weapon of mass peace. We've had too many other types of weapons. If you want to think of one thing that could change, it is infrastructure spending. And that's why I think it's a new agency. And my final message is what I put in italics. And this is a message to all of us. If Europe does not move on the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean will move into Europe. And this is what's happening now. Thank you very much.